today we're going to be topping off the uh, air conditioner with a little bit more refrigerant in this Honda Fit and we'll be learning about the importance of the latent energy of phase change. Today is 100 degrees and you know a few days from now on Wednesday it's going to be 110. 110 is hot enough to be dangerous so I want to make sure that we have the capacity in this you know, refrigerant system, the automotive AC, the only four door car we have to help keep us alive just in case, you know, the power goes out. Because I live in Texas and we've been known to have rolling blackouts and be minutes and seconds away from grid failure. So having, you know, something that's independently powered that can cool us when the grid goes down is, you know, it's a good idea. It's, it's a nice thing to have around. The symptoms we have with this car are, are real simple. When it's hot outside, it doesn't cool off very much. And, and you know, it's like the air conditioner works when it's 80, 90, it works well enough. It kind of takes the humidity off, but it's still kind of warm. So we have a, 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 lock, a lack of capacity. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add more refrigerant to the car. So refrigerant is lost in, in a lot of ways. There's, you know, there's most likely on a, on a 10 year old car, we have a leak around the main seal of the AC compressor, losing some, but also it's just totally natural to, to lose uh, refrigerant through the porosity of the rubber hoses in, in the refrigerant lines. You have to have, when you have an engine that's vibrating, wiggling, moving around, you have to have flexible hoses. And rubber hoses have a known loss rate and they, they lose you know x amount of ounces per year per foot of, of hose and so it's just it's time to top it off so your automotive ac it has a low pressure side and a high pressure side and what that correlates to is you have a liquid side and a gas side so low pressure is gas high side is liquid and we just so happen to have two gauges we have this red high pressure gauge and then we have this you know blue low pressure gauge all modern cars and most cars will have a uh, sticker that says you know what refrigerant to use and so we have the hfc 134a uh I've, I've looked into it to see if that was different than our 134a and everywhere i look it says yeah it's the same thing just a different name only one source said that it was slightly different but they were interchangeable the best way to recharge your air conditioning system is to just put the amount of ounces you know a minimum charge of 13.1 ounces and a maximum of 14.8 evacuate your system and put in by weight the exact amount of refrigerant you need but if you don't have a, a you know a recovery system you got to go by the pressure so you can find pressure charts online i happen to have one pulled up on my phone so on a day like today, that which is 100 degrees, our low pressure side should be between 50 and 55 PSI, and our high pressure side should be between uh, 315 and 325. Without evacuating the system, we really have very limited data on what is going on inside of it. We don't know how much refrigerant is already in here and how much we need. So we're gonna be relying on these pressure charts like heavily and we're, we don't want to exceed the, uh, the range that, that they uh, suggest we have for this uh, repair of adding just a little bit of refrigerant to a system that works but doesn't quite have capacity. We're going to want to start the car, turn the air conditioner on to high, uh, res recirculation or fresh. I don't think it matters as long as you have the windows down, but we want the car to work as hard as possible. Max AC. I've been running the car for a while and we seem to be sort of stuck here, you know, just above 70 degrees. And that's the problem because it is, you know, super common that you typically reach around 40 degrees or a little less, a little more on a, you know, a normal operating air conditioning system in a car. So let's go ahead and tap into the high pressure side. We're going to take the little plastic cap off and then everything should be nice and clean and we'll get our first temperature reading. I say that.
And our gauge, our gauge is only at maybe two, what is that, 205, 204 for the high pressure side. Now for the low pressure side, uh, I'm gonna evacuate the line as I connect it. Just to try to limit how much moisture we're adding to the system. So I'm gonna squeeze the trigger as I install it. And we're down to about 35, 36 PSI on this one. So what we have here is this is a pressurized vessel full of liquid refrigerant. And we're going to be adding it through evaporation into a gas, gas going down the line, into the evaporative side of uh, the, the air conditioner, right? The, the low pressure side, the gas side. And so as we add it, we will notice the can starts to cool instantly. It is already getting cold. Now what's happening there? The liquid is boiling off into a vapor and evaporating out of the can, going into the air conditioner. And what's happening is the latent energy of phase change, an incredibly important concept to grasp. So the latent energy of phase change, what that means is the amount of energy it takes to go from one state to another, solid, liquid, gas, right? So with water, you know, we're like, what, like 70% like water or something? Water's all around us. When, when water goes from a solid to a liquid, it takes 80 calories to change one degree. The reason that is significant is because typically to change the temperature of one gram of water, one degree Celsius takes one calorie. Now to, to take water from a solid state ice to a liquid state water, that takes 80 calories to do that one degree change in temperature. And now when you get to liquid going to gas, it's even larger. So when, once you go from solid to water, you change the temperature from zero degrees Celsius all the way up to you know 99 degrees, one calorie per gram per degree, click, 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 all the way up. You, you get to 99 calories of temperature change. And, and what happens? It wants to go vapor because you're boiling it. All of a sudden, it takes 590 calories of energy in that one gram of water for it to go from liquid to gas. I mean, that is huge. And, and, and once you understand this concept, you start to realize all around us, how does a little bit of sweat keep us cool on a 100 degree day? How, how what's the importance of, of the, the ice caps on our planet being ice and then going to liquid and how that, that stabilizes the temperature of our poles. You know, what happens when the ice goes away and all you have is liquid? Then it takes almost no energy compared to melting ice to change the temperature of the ocean. You know, why is it nice to be under a tree? Can you see my tree? I'm under a tree. You know, because it, it is transporting water from under the ground up to the canopy and evaporating it into the environment, cooling things down. You know, the, the latent energy of phase change is, is, is like there's a, billions of little air conditioners all over the planet regulating temperature inside a closed system where the, the only input is the sun, the only output is radiating into the black of space, and we have this insulative barrier called, you know, our greenhouse gases that are like, like a blanket, the insulation that, that keeps the thing in balance. So we have all these systems balancing within a system. You know, it's, it's incredible. Injecting vapor into the low side of our air conditioning system. So the vapor can then be compressed by a compressor, which will turn it to liquid. And, and so, so compressing uh, condensing vapor to liquid that gives us the condenser which is in the front of our car and it's the, the significance of going from vapor to water 
via the concept of the latent energy of phase change is it has to lose all that energy out into the environment. It, 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 you, you've, you've turned a gas to a liquid, so it's expelling energy that has to go through this, you know, the, the, the condensers like a radiator and, and lose that heat into the environment. And then from there, it goes to a little valve or orifice tube that proportions the amount of expansion that's allowed into your evaporator, where it evaporates. And then when it evaporates, it has to absorb all this energy. And that's where the cold side happens. So we have the hot side condensing, we have the cold side evaporating of our air conditioning system. Let's just add a bit more. Let's see if we can reach some of these numbers that we're looking for. All right, so adding my refrigerant and letting it run for just you know, a few minutes at this pressure, we're now bouncing between 315 and 325. I like that. I'm going to call that good. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect. Oh, it's so hot. The high pressure. And then the low pressure, we're right around uh, 50. I'm going to disconnect that. I'm going to put my caps back on. Holy crap, I just lost one. <laughs> So with those pressures, with windows open, we're just above 60. But let's see what happens when we close the system, we roll up these windows, and we give it just a minute of time to start cooling off in here. So the phase change of latent energy uh, and, and the energy required for it happens both sides. So, so now I have the air conditioner set on recirculation, the air conditioner running. The windows had previously been open, and so we have this very hot, humid air in here that the air conditioner is working through. The, the uh, refrigerant is being compressed by the compressor, sent around to the expansion valve or orifice tube, depending on the type of system you have, and, and it's expanding. And as it expands, every gram of, of refrigerant that expands into gas uh, is now taking up, you know, like five or 600 uh, calories of heat from its environment and the air blowing through this is now cold because it is absorbing that energy but also water vapor inside the car is condensing on the evaporator and so then it'll start dripping and we're extracting the humidity we're extracting the moisture from the car turn it to liquid, drop it in outside, and then once we get the water out of the car, then we'll be able to change the temperature of the car quite rapidly because we're no longer fighting the latent energy of phase change of the water vapor in the air in the car. It's kind of, it's, it's kind of incredible, right? I'm driving to the gas station to, uh, you know, top it off because we got a fuel light on. And we're getting very close to that 40 degree mark, which I referenced earlier. Uh, the only reason I use that number is, is with the air conditioner set to three, my other cars typically reach around 40, you know, and it's, it just seems to be like what an R134A system can do. So we're, you know, what, 44 degrees That's pretty close. I, I feel like you know we could add a bit more and come down a bit but you got to be careful because at this point you are at risk of overcharging the system once you're near the numbers you got to be real careful you know what I, I hooked it up and I was gonna add a bit more and then my can ran dry so I went through 12 ounces of refrigerant somehow to get this slightly above 40 degree temperature so I, I guess the gods of uh, <laughs> R134A blessed me by only selling 12 ounces at a time so I could not overcharge the system and force liquid into the compressor and destroy it. So we're good. The, the car is now capable of feeling very cool, even on a 100 degree day. Uh, it, it can keep us alive when it becomes 110. So I don't know if... Uh, I explained everything as clear as I was trying to do, but but the, the latent energy of phase change, what happens to the energy cycle when you evaporate something is, is critical 
planetary wide and and very locally you know it, it, from from sweat on our skin to the car you name it. it it's incredible so anyways if this video is useful uh which i hope it is give it a thumbs up so be good uh charge your ac systems don't overcharge it because you know we are creeping up on wet bulb temperatures which we will you know what a wet bulb temperature is in case you're uh you know uninitiated that is the temperature at which your body can no longer evaporate the sweat off of its skin and you will find yourself overheating and dying because you cannot cool yourself any longer you know and and, and when we hit wet bulb temperatures you got to get in the bathtub fill it up with cold water hop in the bathtub and chill hopefully you have a car that is you know good enough to have good air conditioning something but that, that, that's the promise of climate change. The destabilization of the whole energy balance of our planet is some terrifying stuff. And the 110 degree weather, which is coming to my region in, you know, four days, that's something to, to prep for. And, and, and you can prep for it by, you know, putting a, putting a little bit more refrigerant in your AC system if it's already not properly working. And it's very important to have two gauges, high and low side. You can get pretty close with just the low side, but, but sometimes it doesn't quite get you there. You know, the high pressure is a very critical thing to be able to see to make sure you're not overcharging. But, you know, anyways, y'all be good. Peace. Uh, like and subscribe if you give a shit about my channel. I, I don't even know if I give a shit about my channel, but it does make like 500 bucks a month. And once I get 10,000 subscribers, I'm going to walk everyone through the entire thing, man. I'm going to show you like the amount of videos I've made, how long I've been working on YouTube, blah, 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 blah. But I really make, I make most of my money from actual work, but YouTube's kind of a fun thing to have on the side for pocket money. Oops, too long. Yeah, I've been, I've been drinking some uh, hard seltzer water because <laughs> it's hot and I love... I love some uh, some delicate little flavors of fruit with my with my booze. So peace out. Yeah.